Hello crafty friends, welcome back to the channel for another card making video. In today's video, we're gonna be making this beautiful purple and floral teal card. But if purple and teal is not your thing, make sure you hang out to the end because we will be showing some other color combinations as well. So to get started here, I'm just showing you the products that I'm using. I have the Wild Columbine Stamp and Die Bundle from Hero Arts, as well as the coordinating stencils. And then I've also picked out a Positive Script Bold Prints along with my Distress Inks in a couple purple and a couple teal colors. So to start this project, we are going to dive right into heat embossing. So for um, this floral image I've gone ahead and loaded it into my mini misty I have a piece of white cardstock that's trimmed to four and a quarter by five and a half inches already loaded in my misty and I've gone ahead and treated that with an anti-static powder tool and now I'm just going to go ahead and do a quick double stamp using Versamark ink um, for my embossing powder to stick to this now, personally, I do struggle once in a while with heat embossing, but I do find that I always get my best results when I double stamp with my Misty, so I'm absolutely going to do that today. So for the embossing powder, I did go ahead and pick out the gold embossing powder. This is also from Hero Arts, and this is going to be the same gold embossing powder that you're going to see later on in the video with the sentiment, with the background. Um, I just thought that picking one embossing powder and kind of tying it through all the elements would make this card feel really cohesive in the end, and I think that that worked out for me. So I did have just some stray embossing powder there that I did wipe off with a brush. And now I'm going to go ahead and just quickly melt this powder with my embossing tool until it's nice and shiny, being careful not to overheat that uh, embossing powder. So we're going to start coloring this in with some stencils. Um, so the, this uh, stencil set does have four coordinating stencils. And the first one here is kind of the larger um, floral images. So for that, I'm going to go ahead and pull out my lighter of the two purple inks that I selected. This is Wilted Violet. Um, it is a Distress ink. When it comes to the blending today on today's project, because I was making kind of a few and mass producing them, I honestly didn't want to spend time, you know, making a gradient, doing any fancy blending, nothing like that. I wanted this card to be just very quick and easy and wanted to play more around with the color combinations as opposed to any fancy blending. So when I'm applying these stencils, you'll see here that I'm just making sure that I have a nice even layer of ink across the entire stencil, easy peasy, and also just making sure that I'm applying those inks in both the clockwise and counterclockwise motions to make sure that I'm filling in those stencils as best that I can. Now, as always, when I do use uh, stencils, I do like to just give them a quick wipe with an old microfiber cloth just to make sure that I'm not getting ink uh, fingerprints on my project because I've done that way too many times and I'm pretty sure we all know that that can be completely devastating. <laughs> so I'm going to move on to stencil number two. Um, this stencil here has the more kind of detailed areas of those flowers. So for this one, I did go ahead and pick a darker purple color, and this time I went with Villainous Potion. So once again, I'm blending in both directions, clockwise and counterclockwise, and I'm honestly, once again, just easy blending here, um, making sure that I have a nice even coverage, not worrying about shading or anything like that, just focusing on, you know, making sure that the stencil is filled and uh, that it looks pretty even, and then we're going to move on to stencil number three. So the third stencil here has some of those leaf openings in it. Um, so we're gonna move on to the teal color family and the lighter of the two colors I selected. And this one here is Salvaged Patina. So for the leaves here, you will see that I did switch out my blending brush to one of these small detailed brushes. Um, this is a half inch brush from Pink Fresh Studio. And I really like using these tiny brushes when you just have little areas in the stencil. I find it easier to control kind of where I want the ink and I'm not wasting as much ink kind of having to ink up, you know, areas all over that stencil and then just wipe off the ink later. Um, I find that this I don't know, I just feel like it uses my ink a little bit more efficiently um, in, a, in an example like this. So once I'm done with the salvaged patina, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the last stencil. So this last stencil is a little different because it has the details of the leaves, but it also has the detailed centers of the flowers. 
So for this card project, honestly, I didn't want to introduce another color into my color combination. So I just simply masked off the center of those flowers and I'm not going to ink those in at all. I'm just going to leave them bright um, on my flower. And then for the details on the leaves, I picked a darker teal color and this one is Peacock Feathers. So once again, just blended that in using a tiny blending brush here. And then I'm going to peel off and reveal that last stencil and show you what we are working with. So at this point, I do want to let you know that uh, once again, we'll, we'll have some other color combinations at the end of the video. So make sure you stay tuned for those. And if you're liking what you're seeing so far, please give this video a thumbs up so that I know to make similar projects in the future. And honestly, it just brings a smile to my face to know that somebody out there enjoyed the video. So um, on the screen now, as you can see, I've lined up the coordinating die for that floral image. And I'm just going to go ahead and off screen zip that through my Gemini Junior and die cut out um, that floral um, image. Now at this point, um, because we will be kind of popping that up with some foam later, if you want to stack your die cuts, now would be a great time to also cut that out a couple times using white cardstock so that you can stack those later. So for the background here, I've loaded a, uh, another stamp here into a stamp positioning tool. This is the Positive Script Bold Prints from Hero Arts. It's beautiful scripty writing that just has a bunch of just positive sayings in it. And I think it's really lovely. Um, so I've gone ahead here and stamped that once again in Versamark and applied some Hero Arts gold embossing powder. And I'm just going to go ahead and melt that until it's beautiful and shiny so that we can move on to the next step in our project. So kind of to play off the scripty old kind of, you know, font text on here, um, I thought it would be fun to pull out my deckled trimmer and give it kind of that rough or torn edged look to kind of, you know, to play into that kind of vintage writing style. So um, in my trimmer here, I'm just going ahead and trimming off one quarter inch off each of the edges. And what that's going to do is it's going to give me a nice white border later on on my finished card project. So now that that panel is prepared, we are going to jump into our sentiment. So for the sentiment today, I did pick a stamp from that same Wild Columbine stamp set. It just says, happy birthday to you. And I'm going to go ahead and ink that up using Versamark ink. And once again, heat emboss using the Gold Hero Arts embossing powder. So once again, for the style of this card, I thought it would be fun to kind of tie together all the parts using the same uh, embossing powder to give it a nice cohesive look. And I think in the end, it came together very beautifully. And you'll even see at the end um, with the other color combinations that I did stick with gold embossing powder in all of them. So on the screen now, I'm just going to go ahead and start trimming down this uh, sentiment panel. So I thought it might be fun to use my deckle trimmer on the bottom edge of the sentiment, but you'll see in a moment that I'm going to go ahead and pull out um, a straight edged trimmer to do the sides and the top of the sentiment. So only the bottom is deckled in this one. Um, when we get to the other cards at the end, you'll see that I believe for the other ones, I just used the deckle trimmer around all the edges. Um, but you can do whatever you like, right? Whichever look you prefer, you can definitely go with. I think both are beautiful, um, but I thought it might be fun just to kind of make it a little different and just add that fun trimmer um, to just one of the edges. So as we're going through the project here, I know I'm showing you um, some cool supplies and I do want to let you know that those supplies of course will be linked in the description box below. And also in the description box, you will see a link to my blog where you can find more photos and more information on the additional color combinations that you'll see at the end of the video. So now I'm moving on to inking up that background panel. So I thought it would be fun to create kind of an ombre background panel with the darkest, most intense color on the left side and fading it out to the lighter ink. So first of all, what I've done here is applied the Wilted Violet, the lighter purple of the two uh, shades. And then I've gone ahead and added Villainous Potion, focusing that just on the very, very edge, very, very left edge of my card panel. So you can see that it starts purple on the left and then fades into the white as you go across the card. So now that all of our card parts are ready, we are going to move on to assembling. 
So for my background panel here, I did go ahead and just put a large piece of foam tape right across the back to pop that up. I thought it would be fun to really emphasize that deckled edge. Um, and especially that left side with the purple ink in the deckled edge. I think that's super fun. And then for the floral image here, I'm just going to line it up kind of along the left hand, a little closer to the left. And I did pop this up with foam tape as well. Um, but like I say, you can totally stack die cuts for our extra dimension as well, which is actually what I did on my other card samples. And then I'm going to add on the happy birthday to you sentiment, just a little less than um, halfway up the card um, to kind of give it a little fun interest. And I'm just going to show you all that beautiful shine and we're going to take a final look at the project, but don't leave just yet. We have to see the bonus color combinations. So here's one that I did with navy and pink distress ink colors. Here's a yellow and navy one. I love this card. And then this one here too has is more traditional with the pink and green, but I think it's just as beautiful as the rest. So if you like this video, enjoy, I invite you to check out the videos on your screen. And until next time, I hope you are keeping it crafty. Bye.